Hello, my name is Andrea and I'm the Chief Engineer for Amazon SageMaker. Today I will be talking to you about training large-scale models with PyTorch and Amazon SageMaker. We're going to talk about the challenges in training large-scale models, especially natural language processing models, and how SageMaker Model Parallel, the training library, helps train those models. And we're also going to discuss some of the best practices that we've learned over time in doing so. Large language models are getting bigger and bigger. What was a state-of-the-art model in 2018, BERT, had 340 million parameters. Right now, the size of our biggest models have grown by a factor of 15,000. We are now looking at models of size 1 trillion parameters. And we're going to discuss the challenges that their particular growth has created and how we can help solve them. Our customers want their models to be trained quickly. And right now, training a large scale model can take weeks. And our customers demand a faster speed. So they're looking at us to help them scale out to multiple machines. And scaling out to multiple machines is what the SageMaker model parallel library does and we're going to describe all the various techniques that we put into this library to make that happen. The first technique that we're going to look at is data parallelism. Data parallelism is the simplest technique at, for distributed training. It allows multiple workers to have a full copy of the model each on multiple machines and for the data to be sharded. As you can see on the screen, these machines have a full copy of the model but data gets sharded across those machines so that we workers take this data, which we refer to as a mini batch, and then they communicate with one another to agree on how the model should be trained. They update their parameters and they take on the next mini batch. This process repeats until the model converges. This is data parallelism. The next topic that we're going to talk about is model parallelism, which means that workers do not hold a full copy of the model. No worker holds a full copy of the model. And we're going to talk, start with pipeline parallelism. In pipeline parallelism, each worker holds a full layer. It's also called interlayer model parallelism. Each worker has a full layer and the workers communicate with each other in making progress. And this allows us to fit larger models because no worker now has to hold the complete model. It allows point-to-point -point communication. To make that happen though, the largest layer needs to fit in memory. And so this technique is appropriate to make larger layer fits, but it has to be, the, the size of a layer must be matched by the size of a GPU. It also allows some idleness, some bubbles in the pipeline. And this is one of the things that we're going to look at by using, uh, through the use of micro batches. Micro batches are a technique that allows us to reduce the amount of idleness in the pipeline. The next technique that we have implemented in our library is tensor parallelism. Tensor parallelism is also intralayer model parallelism, where one or more of the layers are partitioned across the workers. In the previous example, one worker had to hold a complete layer. This is no longer the case. It means that bigger layers can be broken up into chunks that can be subdivided across workers. So even very large layers can be used by this technique. We no longer need to feed at least a single layer on one worker. There is a burden because now the communication across GPUs needs to be more efficient because the work that was done by one worker earlier on now needs to be done by multiple worker. So workers can jointly perform the computation of a single layer. Often this means that this requires an all-to-all -all communication between the workers to assemble the results from a layer. And that means that the needs, the requirements on the communication framework between workers are significantly higher. Tensor parallelism 
allows very big layers to be fit and it reduces the mini batch size. But it poses a challenge. The communication needs to be much more throughput. And the, the, the throughput of the communication, the throughput needs of the communication need to be higher. And it's more difficult to overlap communication and communicate and computation. And this is one of the challenges that our model parallel library tries to address. So just by looking at the three examples that we described, you'll see that model parallelism in general is hard. You need to maximize the utilization of the GPU, finding efficient partitions, manage the infrastructure, and make this whole thing work in an efficient manner. One of the things that SageMaker model parallelism does is, is wrap all this functionality into a single library that not only does the things that we described, but it also allows more advanced techniques to reduce the memory usage, which is one of the key components that we want to minimize. Memory usage of each layer is what limits the amount of layers that we can fit in a single machine. And so in SageMaker Model Parallelism, we introduced optimized state sharding, activation checkpointing, and activation of floating. We're going to describe those in a second. Furthermore, uh, SageMaker, SageMaker Model Parallel allows an automated partitioning of the model. It balances compute and memory requirements automatically across all workers, and it interleaves forwards and backwards passes for different micro batches to minimize pipeline idleness. Tensor parallelism allows the working across data parallel groups, and when it's enabled, SageMaker goes through the model and automatically enables tensor parallelism for supported layers. When using Hugging Face, tensor parallel works automatically, and we've also built high-performance communication libraries to ensure we maximize the GPU utilization. As I said earlier on, there's other techniques that we built, such as state sharding, activation checkpointing, and activation uploading. Basically, all these techniques are designed to trade off GPU memory usage and CPU usage so that we pay less memory usage in exchange for some higher penalty in CPU. And we will see that in some cases, this is actually a beneficial thing to do. You, the usage of SageMaker Model Parallel is pretty straightforward. It's very Pythonic. It's well integrated with PyTorch, and we're going to continue integration with PyTorch over time. The calls are very straightforward, and there's a very simple way to parameterize all the various strategies that SageMaker Model Parallel offers to you. We're now going to describe our journey to training the GPTJ model using SageMaker Model Parallel. We're going to describe some of the lessons that we learned, and hopefully they will help you incorporate the best practices into training NLP models using SageMaker Model Parallel. So let's talk a little bit about uh, GPTJ. It's a general applicable model for relative position encoding. It allows your models to be more generalized. And there's a cool article on Rope by Eleuther AI on the website. And newer models released by Eleuther AI are like GPT Neo and GPT Neo X. First of all, let's talk about the training memory requirements of GPTJ models. And these requirements differ between training and serving. So let's talk about the training part. First of all, you need to hold the parameters, which are about 24 gigabytes in FP32. The gradient, pretty much the same size. The square of the gradients for the Adam optimizer, the optimizer state. And then a bunch of memory that is used temporarily to store the activations and the batch size. We will need to do this for the, the duration of training. And at FP32, this takes about 200 gigabytes, which is quite a lot of memory. Obviously, this number goes down if you're using FP16, which is a reduced precision data type. For serving, the requirements go down to about 48 gigabytes or less if you're using FP16. 
we want to use do this for for inference but right now let's look at the training process and so we believed at the beginning that this this model would easily fit into a single p316 memory with eight gpus each one having 16 gigabytes per gpu that gives us 128 gigabytes of memory that is not the case it wouldn't fit so we used the model parallel library to construct a representation of the model graph which is used to identify which operations require how much memory how much computation this allows us to create a model of the model itself a representation of the model that we can use to decide where to partition and then we if we cannot do that we fall back to heuristics to predict the computer memory requirements of a layer sometimes this cannot be so good and the impact of that is that partitions may or may not be optimal and we may not may or may not be making a good usage of the gpu and the cpu memory so we used the uh, SageMaker model parallelism library and the PyTorch data parallelism library. We put all this into a, an instance type with a mini batch size of two and a precision of a P32. And what we found is that we, we obtained an out of memory error in tracing because the model size was greater than the GPU memory. The total size that I just described was bigger than what was allowed. So we tried the same when using a CPU as a tracing device. And what we found, again, another out of memory error because the model sharded memory was greater than the GPU memory. We succeeded when using four devices. So we decided that we should try something else and we decided to move across a larger number of instances. We tried four instances. And we succeeded, we found that job start time would take about four minutes. Downloading the model and data set from the Hugging Face Hub would take 10 minutes. The tracing and auto partitioning with the CPU as a tracing device would take about 30 minutes. And then the step two of the training would take about 18 minutes. This was done on a P3 instance, which had a 25 gigabit interconnect. We then decided to change some of the configurations, turn activation checkpointing on, turn activation offloading on, and that allowed us to reduce the, the training time. We also decided that we should take our data not from the Hugging Face app, but download it directly from Amazon S3. All told, this brought our training time down to about 42 minutes. The parallel, the degree of parallelism in the pipeline that we used was the highest we'd get was 16, and that allowed us to, in, to make the system run faster, even though the communication overhead increased a little bit. After this, we tried another experiment, and we decided to run our training on our P4 class instances. P4 class instances are a newer version of our P3 instances. P4D24XL is an instance that has 40 gigabytes of memory. This allows bigger parts of the model to be held by a single instance. And that's a big deal because it reduced the need for communication. Secondly, the we allows us to change the number of micro batches. We set it to four, which we found to be a great compromise between computation and communication. The mini batch size was set to four, and the pipeline parallelism degree was set to eight. The other thing that that, that we did was using the the EFA driver to communicate across instances, which allowed us to have these instances talk much more efficiently with each other. This system allowed us to increase the speed. Turning tensor parallelism on in a better way allowed us to bring the training down time down from 25 minutes to about 10 minutes. Also because we changed the precision from FP32 to FP16. Altogether, 
The job starting time was about one minute. The initialization was about one minute. The training and the auto partitioning was about one minute. And the second step of training, once the partitioning had been decided, ended up being around eight minutes. So what have we learned? As we went through that process of going from 58 to about 10, we realized that instances with high GPU memory and high bandwidth interconnect make a big difference because they require, they allow you to use less number of instances and have much more throughput across nodes. So two things happen. One is you need less communication and the communication is faster. Optimized state sharding can be enabled in a lot of cases and it will be helpful if you have one, more than one copy of the model. For some layers, some, some parts, activation checkpointing is helpful and activation offloading for micro batches when the step value is greater than one. When the value is greater than one, that helps. Tensor parallelism helps. And we also had to tune the number of micro batches and number of active micro batches. So there's a lot of parameters to play with. And so we put together a handy guide that you can use to decide this. First of all, you want to decide, we want to understand whether the model and the batch size fits in a single device memory. If not, then you should be evaluating a data parallel training approach. Otherwise, the PyTorch feature supported, uh, otherwise you should be looking at, is this PyTorch feature supported by SMP? If not, you should be using PyTorch native mode parallelly. Does the model fit within the, opti the optimizer? Or do you, need, can, do you need to use sharding and activation checkpointing? If yes, use sharding activation checkpointing. Then if not, you should be using tensor parallel. You should be evaluating whether tensor parallelism is the right thing for you. And if tensor parallelism works for you, then use it without code changes. If that's not the case, then you should be asking yourself, can these model can be part be supported by SageMaker Parallel, Tensor Parallel? If so, use the appropriate API and make it and make it work. If that's not the case, please reach out to us. Ask us the right questions. We will make the we will observe your case. We will make the necessary code changes to, to get you going. And if that's the case, use connect with us and go back and we will make the connection between our system and PyTorch native model parallel. We have put together a number of examples, a number of notebooks that you can use on your own to, to try out the SageMaker model parallel library. And these examples are on screen. They're available today in GitHub. And we hope that it will allow you to understand the power and the usefulness of this library and use it with, together with the power of PyTorch. Thank you.